Welcome in to Runner's Recap Season 2, Episode 2. Head Coach Rod Barnes joining me as always. Thanks as always for coming back. It's always great to be here. <laughs> and of course, Coach, it's even better when you come off a big time win, right? Always. Much fun, more <laughs> exciting, and uh, a little bit happier. <laughs> yeah. So if you guys uh, were unsure of what just took place, so obviously this used to be a men's team. They had the exhibition game, which yes. that played out well for you guys. But you want to win in the games that matter. And that was the first game of the season, the season opener. And that was against Notre Dame de Namur. Yes. I'm, I think I'm saying that correctly. Well, the runners, they ran past the I, and Acronauts? Yes. I know. Those, I'm, I'm learning out here. But they ran <laughs> past them 103 to 51. It was the highest scoring season opener for you guys yes. in Division One history. So pretty cool there. But of course, what did you see from your guys out there that you really liked, obviously, outside of the, the high scoring? Well, I, I thought our guys really played extremely hard. Um, you know, probably 40%, I mean, uh, 40 minutes. And it was really was great for us to have a lead the way we did and see our guys coming off the bench and continuing to play hard and play together. Uh, I was just impressed of, uh, you know, when you 30 points up and these guys started to, you know, relax a little bit, they started to kind of do things on their own and we didn't have that happen. So we were really focused and locked in and that's why we were able to win the games by such a big margin. And the stat line that really stuck out to me, not only fast break points were something that you guys managed well, but off the bench. I believe yeah. it was 60 points coming off the bench. So what can yeah. you say? That was something that you guys also had as a success last year. Yes. But also, how does that manage into uh, who your starting five is? Is it going to be the same? And are we going to see the same guys coming off the bench as we move forward here? Well, I think as we move forward, it'll change because I think we have interchangeable parts. I think because we have a team that's... Uh, very versatile. Uh, we could go big. We could go with a small lineup. Uh, we could go with a faster lineup. So I just think it just all depends on who the opponent is and, and how our guys are playing. So there could be a different starting lineup every night. <laughs> and again, I mentioned this last year that yeah. that's kind of fun, kind of challenging, it but is. it keeps you keeps you going, keeps you on your toes, right? Well, I think the players and the coaches. I think for us uh, as coaches, we're trying to put them in the best position to win. As players, uh, that means they need to be ready. So all yeah. of us are kind of, like you said, on our P's and Q's. And uh, <laughs> it makes it exciting, it makes it fun, it makes it interesting, but also it's a tough when you're having to make those decisions mm -hmm. uh, from game to game. And one guy who's been a standout in both of your games, Taze Moore, so the yes. guard coming back here. He is one of those players coming off the bench, but he put up a career high 18 points. He had five steals in the game. Always an electric <laughs> athlete out there on the court, that's for Always. sure. But what can you say about his growth in the offseason that's made him yes. prepared to start this season off hot? Well, I think he's just trying to take the responsibility of scoring a little bit on his shoulders, but he's also giving us uh, you know, leadership. I think one of the things for him, he, he just feels like it's his turn. Uh, he's been behind some really good teams and really good guards, uh, Deidre Brazil, uh, Jalen Arrington. He's played behind those guys and watched them play and develop. And I think now he's found it really healthy. And uh, it was really tough for him, both physically and mentally. And I think uh, physically, he feels like he's as good as he's been. And mentally, I think he's recovered. I mean, that's a tough injury and to be out yes. that many days and not being able to play. I think right now he's in the best place that he's been both physically and mentally. And coach, I've always wanted to know this. So uh, head coaches always say usually when you start the season off, you can see uh, whether it be, you know, the women basketball team, they knew some of the players that were going to be, you know, mm -hmm. coming in hot. Obviously, you could say that too. What is it as a coach that tells you that this athlete is going to have a great start to the season? What are you guys seeing when you say, hey, they had a great off season, they had a great summer? Well, it's, uh, you know, just sort of the work, the details, you know, how they go about uh, being really consistent on a daily basis. And you can just kind of tell there's a feeling there uh, with them, but also uh, as you watch them, you know, uh, the mistakes or, uh, you know, them playing really well and uh, having a good feel, uh, asking the right questions, really engage while you're coaching. So you know quickly whether that's in the game or in practice, when you say something, they can understand it in, in a way that they can uh, show it out there and perform it on the court. So uh, like Taze, he's been one of those guys that just kind of feel every day that uh, as we're getting closer to the season, you can see him a little bit more focused, but then 
in practice, he would just go stretches where he was playing like he was playing the other night. So you just feel like, uh, and it doesn't happen just one time. It continues to happen. So basically, coach's intuition. You're just intuition. that good. Well, I, I don't know if that's it or not. <laughs> <laughs> we hope when we say something that it actually happens. Yeah, that's, and then when it does, we're all like, that's, wow. That's really what, that's really what it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, we love that, coach. And obviously, for you guys, uh, seeing some new faces on the roster yes. this season and getting to see some big-time minutes from them. So, of course, one of the first guys I want to talk about, Demonte Buckingham. So yes. he obviously is a, kind of a new face. He's been right. on the team, but he's a new face on the court. And then yeah. along with him, it was uh, Alan out there that was showing out so for those right. two guys kind of holding it down at the guard position what have you seen from them and were you expecting them to be as ready to go well I, I still don't think Buck is really neither one of them I should say that or Cam uh, really playing the way right now I, I don't sense that feel like I do with Taze Moore mm -hmm. I sense more of a, a feel of both of those guys are still trying to find their way uh, Taze is a little bit more comfortable you know, and what we're doing. But uh, they're really good players, and we just expect as the year goes on, people are going to see them play better uh, than what they played the other night. And, you know, both of them have been consistent in their work, which is a good thing. And their boats are really easy to coach, which that's yeah. another good thing. And they work hard. They're, yeah. they're in the gym as much as anyone. But they've both been off almost a year from just live action. So it's just going to take them some time to get there rhythm right, which uh, I think it will result in our team being that much better. And of course, everyone was anticipating to see the big guys and yeah. how they move out there. <laughs> Sean Stith, is that, that's how you say that, Stith? Yes. Okay, yeah. so he obviously had a big game, but of course, yeah. just the difference on the court, you can see it in the yeah. paint. You guys really wanted to work in there and you yeah. got to do that th with this past game, the past two games. So yeah. what have you seen from the big guys and what kind of improvement do you see that they can make over the course of the season? Well, they both are different. I think they've, they've started off both playing well because every day it's about in practice. I mean, you would have to imagine seeing those guys for two hours going up against each other. It's very physical. Uh, they both are very competitive. So. Sometimes we have to stop practice or, you know, tell them, hey, guys, you know, we want to stay healthy. Don't, yeah. don't hurt anyone. <laughs> but uh, they're different, which makes it good for us. Uh, Ronnie is more of a, a real uh, defensive rebounder, uh, good screener. Mm -hmm. uh, Sean is more of an offensive player, really good. He knows, has good feet around the basket. The, the big thing for Sean is he shoots free throws really well. Yeah. I think the other <laughs> night he was like 12 or 13 or something <laughs> like that. So they're different, uh, but they make each other better. And mm -hmm. I just think that's why both of them are, are you know, off to a good start because every day it's really competitive between those two guys. Yeah, so Ronnie Redis, um, again, we saw that. We saw that physicality out there. And then with Sean, I was, yeah, he has the touch. Yes. He maybe I could have helped out Shaq out there at the free throw yeah, line, right? I mean, he's pretty good, and, <laughs> and he laughs about it. You know, he taught yeah. the kids, the players about it, about telling them, like, hey, I'm a big guy that can shoot free throws, and I'll challenge any of you guys. But And none of those guys are really <laughs> taking him on because he is a pretty good free throw shooter. Yeah, well, we love to see that, right? We yeah. love the shooting. We love to see everything kind of come out into play, and obviously that's going to be the name of the game as we move forward, that yes. balance between – getting those shooters out there, but of course having that physicality out there on the court as well. Well, moving on, Coach, you have yes. your next game. You get to host once again South Dakota State. Yeah. Uh, South Dakota State, excuse me. What are you keying in on them that you feel like will be the biggest challenge this weekend? Well, I mean, they're, they're really good. I mean, this is a team that's coming in and had a lot of success, uh, had several pros that have been on the team in recent years. They're mm -hmm. really big up front. Uh, it's going to be a great matchup with just size and athleticism. Uh, you know, we feel like we're probably a little bit more quicker than they are, but they're really good. They have a high IQ. Uh, they have some veterans that, that have been there and a few new guys. Uh, their point guard is really quick and fast and athletic. So we're going to be challenged uh, on Saturday night. But it's two programs that over the last four or five years, both of us have been successful and both of us have won conference championships. and. We've had been to the NCAA tournament, so they're going to come here not intimidated or afraid or scared, and we're going to be prepared for them because we know this is a very good team that's used to going on the road and winning. Yeah, all right. Well, we know uh, if you remember a year ago, you guys had some success at home that yes. was had that role, and do you feel like that's that's in the cards for you guys this year to get things rolling at home? Start I, off the big I do, one? I do. I, I just like our team. I mean, we're, yeah. we're not 
surely not where we need to be or want to be right now, but uh, I, I just like we, we've got a good chemistry about ourselves. Our guys are really bought in and playing together. And again, we're a versatile team. Uh, you know, we still have some concerns with some things as far as what we're doing strategy-wise, uh, offensively and defensively. But uh, each week, this team has gotten better. And I think if we continue to do that, uh, we'll be able to be successful at home. So with that in mind, yes. what's the one instant improvement that you're trying to work on this week to get the guys better before this game? Well, our three-point shooter has to get better. I, I think we were four for 24 or something like that. Uh, and that, that wasn't good. And we haven't shot it good all fall, you know, whether that was through our scrimmage or the exhibition game or our first game. So uh, you could tell. I mean, the last game they played us like 38 minutes of zone. And I would anticipate people still trying to do that to us early because if you look at the stats, we're really good in transition. Mm -hmm. We're really good on the offensive glass. We've got a lot of points in the paint. Uh, what we haven't done is shot, shot the ball well from the three. So that's what we're going to be working on a lot this week because uh, the way that South Dakota plays, they kind of give up the three to really kind of pack line defense. So we're going to have to be uh, really good from the perimeter. But we won't change our strategy of trying to get in the paint and get easy buckets and going inside to our big guys. Yeah, and I know, and obviously, from anyone who remembers from the season a year ago, you have some shooters. Uh, Damian yeah. Durham was your, your sharpshooter out right. there from behind yeah. the arc, but you yeah. do have some shooters on the team. So yeah. how do you get that? I mean, this is always what I've worried about with <laughs> as an athlete, former athlete myself. Yeah. When you need to work on something, it kind of gets stuck in your head a little bit, and yeah. it's hard to just make it kind of a natural, natural transition. Yeah. So how do you make that work? How do you get your guys to not think about it too much, but kind of make that improvement from behind the arc? Well, first of all, if I could, I would bottle that up yeah. and I would sell it and I would become a billionaire. I think, I know, I think we talked about this last year. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just think we don't put pressure on them. You right. know, I, I, we right. always talk about playing to our strength. Uh, we're a very physical, uh, athletic uh, team right now that we're scoring a lot uh, in the paint. We're scoring a lot in transition. So we want to make that better. But we'll work on yeah. our perimeter shooting But I just think, like you said, it has to come naturally. Right. And if someone continues to harp on, this is what you got to do, this is what you got to do, a lot of times it, it puts more pressure on, on sure. them to play. And I'm not really trying to do that. I probably put more pressure on the other end about <laughs> defensive stops yeah. and rebounding and <laughs> helping each other. So they are more concerned about that than they are <laughs> shooting threes. But I just think our team, see, we talk about it. They know it, they realize it. We studied it, our stat sheet and personnel and you know what we're doing percentage-wise. And we have goals that we want to reach each and every night. And we haven't done that with our three-point shooting. Gotcha. Well, I heard you um, talk about pressure. Yeah. Can I put you in a pressure-filled situation right now? I'm ready. Just okay. As long as you know that it's coming back, OK? Yeah, yeah. So we're, right. we're changing it up. I'm calling this the five fast break questions because when we talk about the runners both women's and men's team it's all about that fast break so yes. i'm going to give you five you got to answer quick okay you That's, feel I'm, I'm ready seat is heated we're ready i know i have my cheat sheet here so <laughs> <laughs> my first question for you coach is what is your favorite college venue to play in that hasn't been your home court oh florida gators that's where i was now probably uh grand canyon okay Yes. What's the most challenging college venue you've ever had to play in, whether that be as a player or a coach? Uh, Rupp Arena, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, here, obviously, New Mexico State because we haven't won there. So yeah. uh, hopefully we can get that done this year. All right. And then what is the uh, best college tradition of an opponent that you've seen and witnessed, whether it be in these environments or that you've seen them do you know, during their, their whole season that you really respect? Oh, wow. <laughs> that's, that's a tough one. Oh, wow, that's tough. Probably the Gator yeah. Chop. I think that's yeah. what they call it. Uh, that's intimidating when you're a coach or a player yeah. to have the students right there on top of you and, and they're doing that <laughs> chopping thing. So uh, that's probably the thing that's But most. you guys got the runners. So. We got the runners up now. Yeah. <laughs> Not really intimidating, but you know we're here. The intimidation is the fact that you run right. over your opponents. Yes, we got that. <laughs> All right, coach. So if you were. If there was, like, let's say a Coach Carter movie about Coach Barnes, who would be the actor to play you? Um, Samuel Jackson. 
Okay. That was, that was easy. It's like you had that right there. You're waiting no, for that question. I, I probably think about it later and go, why did I say <laughs> that? So. And that question comes to you via uh, Matt Lively, our new sports guy. He wanted he wanted to know. Okay. So we thank you, Matt, for that. Yes. All right, Coach. So uh, speaking of movies, what's, what's one of your favorite movies that you might be a little embarrassed to say is one of your favorites? Uh, American Gangster. American Gangster. Yeah, hey, it's that's totally cool. the opposite of what people would think <laughs> I would be watching, but... It's, it's maybe my favorite movie. All right. That was of five. Of all time. That was five questions. You yeah. made it through. I made it. I was going to put the pressure on you make it really quick, and you just have to answer, and that got yeah, you going. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying not to take too much pressure. It's, <laughs> trying to take it off as I'm doing with our players. Well, with that, we're going to go into bonus time. You can flip it around. You can ask me a question. Okay. Well, I, my, my question would be, <laughs> <laughs> uh, being in – in this particular job, mm -hmm. if this was not what you were doing, what would you be doing? Sleeping. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, know. I know, I know, I know. I knew yeah. your question. I was just like, that's yeah. the first thing I think about. What would I be doing if yes. I wasn't at work? Sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. I got to think about that. That That's a tough one because I would, I would so want to say. So there has never been a second option. Like it's I'd, always been sports, so okay. I would say if I wouldn't, if I would have gone the way of being a professional athlete, that would be the other option. If I wasn't doing this, but let's say if I took sports off the table, I don't know. It would be maybe something. I would have to be in some way helping people. So whether that be in the health industry, that was something I looked at in college before I got into this. So doing something, I I interned or volunteered at a hospital. I okay. mean, but I don't know. I mean, you're talking to an you indecisive can't, you person. You can't say I don't know. I know. This is the hot seat. We need to know. I don't know. Does it count? What? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, maybe something like a nurse or a doctor, something okay. like that. But again, I would be like, well, now I'd have to go back and be like, well, I'd have to be really good at science. And I think I was okay <laughs> with the so, right teacher. Well, can we say a nurse? <laughs> yeah. I would want to do something. Honestly, I would want to do something that's that's helping people. And again, the f I do I do like the aspect that this job. I feel like I get to do. I'm not so much helping people, right. but I get to share stories, and it's really fun. So I kind of lucked out. Okay. So I'm I'm enjoying this. Okay. So can I just say that I'll just I'll just no other option. I did pretty good today. <laughs> Tough question. All right. Well, thank you as always, Coach. Thanks for letting thank me you. question you about the season you. and about other random stuff. We love that, and uh, we will be here next week. But until then, we'll next actually week. we're doing every other week. week. So yes. we'll see you in two weeks, so that we can let you guys travel. But um, we'll catch up with you, see how you've been doing, sure. and as always, thanks for joining us, Coach. Thank we'll see you. you guys next time for Runners Recap.